electrostatics in free space course, we went through a great many derivations and postulates of electrostatics, assuming that all the fields were in free space, and that the free space constitutive relation, d equals epsilon naught e, held true. We did that for the sake of simplicity, to eliminate variables that were not the focus of that discussion, but all those derivations hold true in materials as well, as long as we scale epsilon naught by the relative primitivity of the material, and as long as our assumption about the frequency and variance of the primitivity holds true. So for instance, the force between two charges embedded in a medium with relative primitivity epsilon r and separated by a distance r1 is given by this equation. This is exactly the same equation we used in the free space course, except that we have changed epsilon naught to the product of epsilon naught and epsilon r. Similarly, the voltage at a distance r1 from a point charge, assuming that the entire medium surrounding the point charge has a primitivity of epsilon r, is q over 4 pi epsilon r1, where epsilon has replaced epsilon naught in this equation. And the electrostatic energy density stored in a medium of relative primitivity epsilon r is given by one half d dot e as before, except now d equals epsilon e. So this can be rewritten as one half epsilon naught epsilon r times the squared magnitude of e. Note that scaling epsilon naught by epsilon r increases the stored energy density for the same electric field magnitude. This same method applies to all the equations we presented in the electrostatics in free space module. Just apply the new definition of d and epsilon if in the presence of a material.